I think Dave wants to owe. Happy, merry, whatever. Oh, you don't believe in that crap anyway, so who cares? Merry Christmas Eve. Yes, Merry Christmas Eve. Craig's all festive with his blue sweater. Well, you've probably seen this blue sweater before. It's nice. Yeah. Anyway, David wants to talk about set-asides. Yeah. Not what kind of set-asides? Government set-asides. Government set-asides? Yeah. To do what? To try to encourage certain parts of uh, what the economy. That were, that were, oh, wait a second. What do you mean that were historically... Well, there's all, there's all kinds was of... There, are we admitting there was historic racism? Is that what you're talking about? Or? Is, there, there's, you know, should we commit money to small businesses as opposed to always giving it to the large ones? That would be sort of an equal opportunity type process. Should we give preference to businesses located within our taxing district? Mm -hmm. As in the city of Dayton, should they give preference to people who actually pay taxes in their in their uh, district. They uh, just decided to set guidelines for first preferences to within the date within Dayton and second so within Dayton has a, County. Oh, so so they're yeah. going to give it to inside the county or inside the city inside first. Inside the city first, then inside So the is there like a point system? Is there so can you charge them more? See, that's the problem with set asides is that somebody wins and somebody loses. And the question about set asides, I mean, that makes kind of sense. You want to keep Money your inside. talent and right. But historically, Dayton, and I think we've actually had some comments on this, is that you know B students hire C students, and they don't want to elevate anybody else or give them any money. Right. So they always give it to somebody out of town. At least, yeah. You can say I've chip on my shoulder, chip, chip, chip. But you know, <laughs> but, that's the way I've always seen. But it. the federal government does it as well. They have um, participation guidelines, and they have things. The Small Business Association oh. has things called hub zones. Well, that's you. Well, hub zone stands for historically underutilized business zones. Well, historically, and, this was a great business zone. Well, not now a, it's underutilized. Now, now it's underutilized according to the SBA. The banana. And, the and uh, hub zones require that a company have. The ownership lives within inside the hub zone, and 35% of the employees also live within the hub zone. So it's not easy necessarily to get that status and make use of it. Yeah, because everybody out in the suburbs will say, well, why would we want to give poor and stupid people... <laughs> why would so, we want to give poor and stupid so, people a contract? Well, that makes no sense. I, I'm not beating the table. Yeah. It's only one. It was a light tap. <laughs> so there are, other, there are other set-asides that are set up for... Um, Minority-owned businesses. Ah, the 8A program. And Another it, one that I don't and, like. And the 8A is a, is a federal program that is, uh, well, Raj Soin did quite well by it. Oh, some, but some, wait a second, wait a second. I have never understood how Raj Soin, a naturalized Indian, because the dots, not the feathers, the dots, not the feathers. That qualifies. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. I thought the premise behind the minority set aside program is somebody that my forefathers, which obviously my forefathers I, were discriminated. I have never understood the 8A guidelines. Well, wait a second. How? I mean, I understand why you would give the Chinese, you know, preference, African Americans, and the feathers. Well, the Chinese because we brought them over yeah, to work we, on the railroad. Yeah, coolies on okay. the railroad. Okay, yeah, okay. I and, understand. Kind of and African Americans because we brought them over on a boat as slaves. Yeah, well, okay. and American Indians because we stole their land. Okay. Right. So but those the three dots, I can't figure out. Huh? I can't figure out how. See, that's really what drove me crazy. That's why when when Raj bought Turner, that's yeah. what drove me crazy. Eight, eight A's become a real problem for even for some. Uh, there's another classification which I happen to be a part of, which is service disabled veteran owned businesses. And for some reason, 8As take preference over service-disabled veteran-owned businesses. And in 2004, Ronald Reagan, or uh, 2004, That'd George Bush, Jr., Jr. 43, yes, uh, he signed in law requiring that the, all federal projects, 3%, be set aside for service-disabled veteran-owned businesses. Of course, no federal agency is even coming close to matching that. Meeting uh, nobody ever watches any of that stuff. And, 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 I mean, it's another one of these laws, requirements, it's pretty toothless. And unfunded mandate. Unfunded or mandate or, or unregulated. just... Unregulated. It sounds good on paper, but never gets done. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of laws that we pass that make no sense at all because, you know, they talk about things I mean, that like, are unenforceable. Like marijuana? 
Well, we should talk about that someday too, because you know the 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 Mexican immigrants that are controlling the border just allow the stuff to come on in. We oh. just hired border guards that are. Can, we should talk about that someday. But and, long story short but, is, but there 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 are laws that are unenforceable. I, I most laws are unenforceable. Wow. <laughs> that that just doesn't help. But anyway, so the city of Dayton has decided that they're going to have some preference guidelines, but they left out service disabled veterans, of course. But um. You know, are these a good thing or are these a bad thing? And why well, say keeping the money close to home is a good thing? Yeah, that one I, I really I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, well, I don't know. However, it, it does bring in a lot of opportunity for uh, nepotism and favoritism. And, well, the and thing about and we can have this discussion about nepotism. See, if you look at it, and if you look at how the city of Dayton was done back in the old days, mm-hmm. back in the old days the white power machine ran it, right. and they gave the contracts to their friends. The problem is, or not the problem, is that they actually knew how to do the work. Yeah. So, as you know, those things changed, some yeah. of the people didn't know how to do the work. It, there's there's other issues with this as well. Um, you know, whenever you have these these guidelines, preferences, etc. I mean, one of the big ones, and this was just dealt with at, at the state level, is prevailing wage requirements. Well, let me and, tell you, everybody's prevailing wage is going to keep going down. <laughs> if you want to be a third world country like China, we gotta we gotta lower that labor bar. Pre- prevailing wage requires that you pay what is not the going rate, but what is the set rate for hourly labor. Right. And um, well, we can spend hours pres- on that. Well, the, president, probably- oh, oh, the president of Ohio State helped push for a test program, so that their construction on their new buildings would cost them less. But as it is right now, cities pay prevailing wage for a lot of things. And that drives the cost up of building school buildings, building roads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's not really free market. So we don't have any answers. We just thought we'd talk about it. Okay. So have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Before I go to all the movies, Avatar 3D and up in the air.